I'm John Skinner and this supports Chapter 10 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. This is the three-way rig used in this video. Um, at the bottom is a one ounce, it's actually a John Skinner s and bass bucktail. Um, they'll become available, I believe, in August of 2017. It's tipped with an otter tail bait strip. Often uh, it's tipped with pork rind. Um, off the three-way, normally you'd fish a heavy sinker, 8, 10 ounces in these deep rips, uh, cannonball sinkers. I wanted to try something different. I used a 6-ounce Tsunami fluke ball, also tipped with an otter tail bait strip. That's a 5-foot leader of 80-pound mono between the three-way and the bucktail. It's about 1 foot of 50-pound mono between the three-way and the fluke ball. And I'll say more about this in a minute. On the left side of the console on top there, there's a handheld GPS right there. And that's uh, what's going to get me to be able to fish this spot uh, this morning. It's out in the middle of nowhere. I haven't fished it in about five years. Uh, I've got a couple marks in that handheld GPS, and I'm going to use that to, to get on these grounds. Really, the key to this video, the thing I want to stress is uh, this rod. And I'll say more about that in, in a minute. But, um, okay, so the way this fishing is done is you drop down, you pick up a couple cranks, the whole point is to follow the contour of the bottom. I have a video that's dedicated to this. I will link that in to the end of this video. But it's a matter of you drifting along. This is done uh, typically in stronger currents. This is uh, two and a half knots is the current right now. I'm fishing about 45 feet of water. I've got a slope that will come up to 30, and the stripers are along these slopes. But like I said, I haven't fished this spot in five years. The first drift in five years, I'm not sure what's here. I've got just a couple marks from that handheld GPS, um, so I'm not sure what to expect here. So I'll keep a close eye on the fish finder on the depth, and uh, when I see it get deeper, I'll drop back. That's what I'm going to do right now, just dropping back. Now I'll pick up a couple cranks. Um, if I happen to feel bottom while I'm drifting, I'll just pick up a couple of cranks. I'm trying to just glide that bucktail a couple of feet off the bottom. This is a devastating fishing technique. Uh, used by a lot of commercial fishermen in areas like uh, Plum Gut, the Fisher's Island Race, and, and similar places. But it works out here on Long Island Sound as well, and many other places, inlets, and so forth. Okay, so I feel as though I'm scoping out a little bit, which means I'm getting too much angle in the line. So I'm just cranking back in. I want to drop down. I'm trying to keep it uh, kind of straight down. I don't want it going out too far in an angle. I felt like that's what was happening there. Now, because this fishing is often done with uh, sinkers in the range of 6, 8, 10, 12, even 16 ounces, um, it's done with typically heavy gear to the point that I don't find it all that much enjoyable. However, boy, there's new technologies out there, and I was awakened this trip to one of those. This is a um, Tsunami slow pitch rod. The rod weighs 7 ounces, um, and yet it says it's rated for 20 to 50 pound test line. Looking at it, it makes no sense to me. I can't see how this can be. I have it paired um, with an equally impressive Max L20 reel. The reel's only 13 ounces, so I have uh, a, a very light setup here. And uh, oh. right there I had a hit, and uh, my reaction to that was okay. They're here, I've done something right, um, and, and there's, you see me right there, grab a GPS mark. Even at this point in the video, this first drift with this rod, um, and, and it's spiral wrapped, which means the guides go from the top spiraling around to the bottom. I'm not understanding how I have six ounces plus a one ounce bucktail, and there I feel like there's nothing there. It, it's hard to understand. And here we go. I'm hooked okay. up. And any comments you hear out of me really aren't regarding the fish. I mean, it's a good fish, and it's a great way to test the rod. It's my reaction to how this gear feels, oh, and I'm just going to let it nice. play out. Oh, really freaking nice. Oh, shit, yeah.
this is no way to land a fish if you care about losing them. But uh, I, I'm going to let him go anyway. Nice way to start the trip. Uh, and actually, this is supposed to be a sea bass trip, but I wanted to do a couple of striper drifts first and then move on to the sea bass grounds. So I mentioned the rod being spiral wrapped. Another term for that is acid wrapped. And uh, if you Google that, you can learn quite a bit about it. All right, so I got that striper moved up. I don't remember whether it's the next drift or, or the one after, but uh, I'm back in again. And uh, I've got 30 pound test braid on here. And I, I gotta tell you, it feels like one of my fluke rods, but uh, I'm gonna you know lean as best as I can on it and, and try to really push it. But it's amazing. I mean, you can see it's not, you know, um, above the real seat there, you know, it's not bent like a noodle. This power, um, you know, there's a lot of power. You can see uh, what I got there at the bluefish. And thank nice. you very much. He just spit the hook. I don't have to deal with him. Um, and as it's going to turn out, um, I'm not going to get any more stripers this trip. I, I believe I'm going to hook one th um, that I'm not showing that I'm pretty sure was a striper, but I, I dropped that one. But these blues are definitely big enough to uh, be a fun test of the rod, so uh, I don't mind catching these and hooking these Coming up. a little fast. Yeah, there's a reason for that. If you're familiar with this fishing, you got to wonder what's going on with this fluke ball instead of a sinker. You know, I, it just occurred to me, if I'm going to be putting weight down, why not put something that might actually catch fish? Uh, that looks pretty good in the water. This is the first time I'm ever trying it, so at this point, I have no clue if it's going to work. But I'm almost thinking, how can it not work? And then the thought is, you know, why wouldn't a sea bass hit that or a fluke? So it kind of gives me an extra thing that might catch a fish. Now, the liability there is if you're fishing over sticky structure, a uh, plum gut off of eastern Long Island, you don't want to do this. You're going to get hung up on the bottom. I would say maybe the same thing about areas of the race, Fisher's Island race. But out here, I think it's mostly sand waves. I'm not snagging bottom. It's really not uh, something I need to worry about. So I'll try the fluke ball. So the exact model of the rod, uh, TSSPJC681H. So it's actually 6 feet 8 inches uh, heavy action. Yeah, I'm hesitating there because heavy action, you, you got to hold this thing in your hand. You, you never think of it as heavy action. However, in this situation, putting the pressure on the fish, yeah, I, I can understand it. Okay, it's rated 20 to 50 pound test line. The rating is 2 to 5 and a quarter ounces. However, you get to see at the end of this video, the wind picks up. I actually went up to 8 ounces. I took the fluke ball off. I didn't have any heavier fluke balls. I went to an 8 ounce cannonball. I went to a 10 ounce cannonball. And yeah, the rod was bending at that point, but it was still manageable and okay and, and quite comfortable. So, um, yeah, I, you know, maybe you can hear it in my voice. I came away from this trip dumbfounded and not understanding how the rod could do what it does. I actually emailed my tsunami contact and said, explain this to me. And, you know, he said it's new materials and, you know, certainly the, the spiral or acid wrap um, takes the stress off as well, but uh, apparently it has to do with the new materials and, and the blank that makes it, you know, light, strong, durable, everything else. And, uh, yep, it uh, impressed me. To, me. to me, this advancement is like going from fiberglass to graphite, uh, going from, you know, a typical graphite rod or whatever composite to this thing. So, all right, you know what? This is that, what I am most sure is a bass. And I end up dropping them, which is yeah, too bad. Cause damn, this one felt good. Uh, but I was just happy to get some hookups, and I pushed the rod, so that was fine. Um, I happen to mention that this was supposed to be a sea bass trip. Um, if you saw my previous video, I killed big sea bass here. I had 16 beautiful sea bass. Trust me, the sea bass were completely gone. I mean, even though this weather came up like this, I still had a manageable drift. The fish just weren't there. I know a couple other boats, same area, said the same thing. Yes, yeah, sea bass were loaded previous week, then they just absolutely disappeared. This was my only hookup uh, in like the five or six drifts I made across the sea bass grounds. And uh, yeah, this is certainly not what I was looking for at all. And uh, 
But, well, uh, that's all right. It was a great trip. I, I was happy to get on those bass grounds. I had a blast with that rod. Um, so I hope you found this informative. If you've never picked up one of these rods, just check one out in a tackle store just, you know, so you can see what it feels like. And, um, boy, if you get the fish one, you're going to be impressed, I'm sure. All right. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.